to open the doors. So I'll begin, I'll begin here. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Dear brothers and sisters, on this most holy night in which our Lord Jesus Christ passed from death to life, the church calls upon sons and daughters scattered throughout the world to come together and pray. If we keep the memorial of the Lord's Paschal Solemnity in this way, word, then the sure hope bearing his triumph over death, living with him in God. Let us pray. Sanctify the new fire, we pray, and grant that by these Paschal celebrations we may be so inflamed with heavenly desires that with minds made pure we may attain festivities of unending splendor through Christ our Lord. Christ. And today, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega, all time belongs to Him, and all the ages. To him be glory and power through every age and forever. Amen. Amen. By his holy and glorious wounds may Christ the Lord guard us and protect us
May the light of Christ, rising in glory, dispel the darkness of our hearts and of our minds. The light of Christ Thanks be to God The light of Christ Thanks be to God The light of Christ, thanks be to God.
Exalt, let them exalt the hosts of heaven. Exalt, let angel ministers of God exalt. Let the trumpet of salvation sound aloud our mighty King's triumph. Be glad, let earth be glad, as glory floods her, ablaze with light from her eternal King. Let all corners of the earth be glad, knowing an end to gloom and darkness. Rejoice, let Mother Church also rejoice, arrayed with the lightning of his glory. Let this holy building shake with joy, filled with the mighty voices of the peoples. Therefore, dearest friends, Standing in the awesome glory of this holy light, invoke with me, I ask of you, the mercy of God Almighty, that he who has been pleased to number me, though unworthy, among the Levites, may pour into me his light unshadowed, that I may sing this candle's perfect praises. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, with heart and love of mind and heart, and with devoted service of our voice 
to acclaim our God invisible, the Almighty Father, and Jesus Christ, our Lord, his Son, his only begotten, who for our sake paid Adam's debt to the eternal Father and pouring out his own dear blood, wiped clean the record of our ancient sinfulness. These then are the feasts of Passover, in which is slain the Lamb, the one true Lamb, whose blood anoints the doorposts of believers. This is the night when once you led our forebears, Israel's children, from slavery in Egypt, and may them pass dry shot through the Red Sea. This is the night that with a pillar of fire banished the darkness of sin. This is the night that even now throughout the world sets Christian believers apart from worldly vices and from the gloom of sin, leading them to grace and joining them to his holy ones. This is the night when Christ broke the prison bars of death and rose victorious from the underworld. Our birth would have been no gain had we not been redeemed. Oh, oh, wonder of your humble care for us. O love, O charity beyond all telling. To ransom a slave, you gave away your son. O truly necessary sin of Adam, destroyed completely by the death of Christ. O happy fault that earned so great, so glorious a Redeemer. O truly blessed night, Worthy alone to know the time and hour when Christ rose from the underworld. This is the night of which it is written, the night shall be as bright as day, Dazzling is the night for me, and full of gladness. The sanctifying power of this night dispels wickedness, washes faults away, restores innocence to the fallen, and joy to mourners. Drives out hatred, fosters concord, and brings down the mighty. On this your night of grace, O Holy Father, accept this candle, a solemn offering, the work of bees,
season of your servants' hands, an evening sacrifice of praise, this gift from your most holy church. But now we know the praises of this pillar, which glowing fire ignites for God's honor. A fire into many flames divided, yet never dimmed by sharing of its light. For it is fed by melting wax, drawn out by mother bees, to build a torch so precious. Oh, 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 truly blessed night, when things of heaven are wed to those of earth and divine to the human. Therefore, O oh Lord, we pray you that this candle, hallowed to the honor of your name, may persevere undimmed to overcome the darkness of this night. Receive it as a pleasing fragrance and let it mingle with the lights of heaven. May this flame be found still burning by the morning star, the one morning star who never sets, Christ your Son, who coming back from death's domain has shed his peaceful light on humanity and lives and reigns forever and ever. My dear brothers and sisters, now that we have begun our solemn vigil, let us listen with quiet hearts to the word of God. Let us meditate on how God in times past saved his people and in these, the last days, has sent us his son as our redeemer. Let us pray that our God may complete this paschal work of salvation by the fullness of redemption. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless wasteland and darkness covered the abyss while a mighty wind swept over the waters. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. God saw how good the light was. God then separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness he called night. Thus evening came and morning followed the first day. Then God said, let there be a dome in the middle of the waters to separate one body of water from the other. And so it happened. God made the dome 
and it separated the water above the dome from the water below it. God called the dome the sky. Evening came and morning followed the second day. Then God said, let the water under the sky be gathered into a single basin so that the dried land may appear. And so it happened. The water under the sky was gathered into its basin and the dried land appeared. God called the dry land the earth and the basin of the water he called the sea. God saw how good it was. Then God said, let the earth bring forth vegetation, every kind of plant that bears seed, and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with its seed in it. And so it happened. The earth brought forth every kind of plant that bears seed, and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with its seed in it. God saw how good it was. Evening came and morning followed, the third day. Then God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate day from night. Let them mark the fixed times the days and the years, and serve as luminaries in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth. And so it happened. God made the two great lights, the greater one to govern the day and the lesser one to govern the night. And he made the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth, to govern the day and the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. God saw how good it was. Evening came and morning followed, the fourth day. Then God said, let the water teem with an abundance of living creatures and on the earth let birds fly beneath the dome of the sky. And so it happened. God created the great sea monsters and all kinds of swimming creatures with which the water teems and all kinds of winged birds. God saw how good it was and God blessed them saying, be fertile, multiply, and fill the waters of the seas, and let the birds multiply on the earth. Evening came, and morning followed, the fifth day. Then God said, let the earth bring forth all kinds of living creatures, cattle, creeping things, and wild animals of all kinds. And so it happened. God made all kinds of wild animals, all kinds of cattle, and all kinds of creeping things of the earth. God saw how good it was. Then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and the cattle and over all the wild animals and all the creatures that crawl on the ground. God created man in his image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female. He created them. God blessed them saying, be fertile and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and all the living things that move on the earth. God also said, see, I give you every seed-bearing plant all over the earth 
and every tree that has seed-bearing fruit on it to be your food. And to all the animals of the land, all the birds of the air, and all the living creatures that crawl on the ground, I give all the green plants for food. And so it happened. God looked at everything he had made, and he found it very good. Evening came, and morning followed, the sixth day. Thus, the heavens and the earth and all their array were completed. Since on the seventh day, God was finished with the work he had been doing. He rested on the seventh day from all the work he had undertaken. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Of 
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you are wonderful in the ordering of all your works. May those you have redeemed understand that there exists nothing more marvelous than the world's creation in the beginning, except that at the end of the ages, Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed, who lives and reigns forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, God said, let us make man in our image after our own likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and the cattle, and over all the wild animals, and all the creatures that crawl on the ground. God created man in his image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, saying, Be fertile and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and all the living things that move on the earth. God also said, See, I give you every seed-bearing plant all over the earth, and every tree that has seed-bearing fruit on it to be your food. And to all the animals of the land, all the birds of the air, and all the living creatures that crawl on the ground. A reading from the book of Genesis. God put Abraham to the test. He called to him, Abraham. Here I am, he replied. Then God said, Take your son Isaac, your only one whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah. There I shall offer him up as a holocaust on a height that I will point out to you. Early the next day, Abraham saddled his donkey, took with him his son Isaac and two of his servants as well. And with the wood that he had cut for the holocaust, set out for the place of which God had told him. On the third day, Abraham got sight of the place from afar. Then he said to his servants, both of you stay here with the donkey, while the boy and I go on over yonder. We will worship and then come back to you. Thereupon, Abraham took the wood of the Holocaust and laid it on his son Isaac's back, while he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two walked on together, Isaac spoke to his father, Abraham. Father, Isaac said. Yes, son, he replied. Isaac continued, here are the fire and the wood. But where is the sheep for the Holocaust? Son, Abraham answered, God himself will provide the sheep for the Holocaust. Then the two continued going forward. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. Next. He tied up his son Isaac 
and put him on top of the wood on the altar. Then he reached out and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the Lord's messenger called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham. Here I am, he said. Do not lay your hand on the boy, said the messenger. Do not do the least thing to him. I know now how devoted you are to God, since you did not withhold from me your only begotten son. As Abraham looked about, he spied a ram caught by his horns in the thicket. So he went and took the ram and offered it up as a holocaust in place of his son. Abraham named the site Yahweh Yireh. Hence, people now say, on the mountain, the Lord will see. Again, the Lord's messenger called to Abraham from heaven and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you acted as you did in not withholding from me your beloved son, I will bless you abundantly and make your descendants as countless as the stars of the sea and the sands of the seashore. Your descendants shall take possession of the gates of their enemies, and in your descendants all the nations of the earth shall find blessing. All this because you obeyed my command. The word of the Lord. Let us pray. O oh God, Supreme Father of the faithful, who increased the children of your promise by pouring out the grace of adoption through the whole world, 
and who by the Paschal mystery make you servant Abraham, father of nations, as once you swore. Grant, we pray, that your peoples may enter worthily into the grace to which you called them through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward. And you lift up your staff and with hand outstretched over the sea, split the sea in two, that the Israelites may pass through it on dry land. But I will make the Egyptians so obstinate that they will go in after them. Then I will receive glory through Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and charioteers. The Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I receive glory through Pharaoh and his chariots and charioteers. The angel of God, who had been leading Israel's camp, now moved and went around behind them. The column of cloud also, leaving the front, took up its place behind them, so that it came between the camp of the Egyptians and that of Israel. But the cloud now became dark, and thus the night passed without the rival camps coming any closer together all night long. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord swept the sea with a strong east wind throughout the night, and so turned it into dry land. When the water was thus divided, the Israelites marched into the midst of the sea on dry land, with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. The Egyptians followed in pursuit. All Pharaoh's horses and chariots and charioteers went after them right into the midst of the sea. In the night watch just before dawn, the Lord cast through the column of the fiery cloud upon the Egyptian force a glance that threw it into panic. And he so clogged their chariot wheels that they could not hardly drive. With that, the Egyptians sounded the retreat before Israel, because the Lord was fighting for them against the Egyptians. Then the Lord told Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea, that the water may flow back upon the Egyptians, upon the chariots and their charioteers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea flowed back to its normal depth. The Egyptians were fleeing head on toward the sea, when the Lord hurled them into, into its midst. As the water flowed back, it covered the chariots and the charioteers of Pharaoh's whole army, which had followed the Israelites into the sea. Not a single one of them escaped, but the Israelites had marched on dry land through the midst of the sea, with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel on that day from the power of the Egyptians. When Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the seashore and beheld the great power that the Lord had shown against the Egyptians, they feared the Lord and believed in him and in his servant Moses. Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord, for he is gloriously triumphant. Horse and chariot he has cast into the sea. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Yeah. 
Let us pray. O God, whose ancient wonders remain undimmed in splendor even in our day, for what you once bestowed on a single people, freeing them from Pharaoh's persecution by the power of your right hand, now you bring about as the salvation of the nations to the waters of rebirth. Grant, we pray, that the whole world may become children of Abraham and inherit the dignity of Israel's birthright through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the prophet of Isaiah. The one who has become your husband is your maker. His name is the Lord of hosts. Your redeemer is the Holy One of Israel, called God of all the earth. The Lord calls you back like a wife forsaken and grieved in spirit, a wife married in youth and cast off, says your God. For a brief moment I abandon you, but with great tenderness I will take you back. In an outburst of wrath for a moment, I hid my face from you. But with enduring love, I take pity on you, says the Lord, your Redeemer. This is for me like the days of Noah, 
when I swore that the waters of Noah should never again deluge the earth. So I have sworn not to be angry with you or to rebuke you. Though the mountains leave their place and the hills be shaken, my love shall never leave you, nor my covenant of peace be shaken, says the Lord, who has mercy on you. O afflicted one, storm-battered and unconsoled, I lay your pavements in carnelians and your foundations in sapphires. I will make your battlements of rubies and your gates of carbuncles and all of your walls of precious stones. All your children shall be taught by the Lord, and great shall be the pace of your children. In justice shall you be established, far from the fear of oppression, where destruction cannot come near you. The word of the Lord. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, surpass for the honor of your name what you pledge to the patriarchs by reason of their faith, and through sacred adoption increase the children of your promise. 
so that what the saints of old never doubted would come to pass, your church may now see in great part fulfilled through Christ our Lord. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, all you who are thirsty, come to the water. You who have no money, come, receive grain and eat. Come without paying and without cost. Drink wine and milk. Why spend your money for what is not bread? your wages for what fails to satisfy? Heed me, and you shall eat well. You shall delight in rich fare. Come to me heed heedfully. Listen, that you may have life. I will renew with you the everlasting covenant, the benefits assured to David. As I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander of nations, so shall you summon a nation you knew not, and nations that knew you not shall run to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, who has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call him while he is near. Let the scoundrel forsake his way and the wicked man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord for mercy, to our God who is generous in forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways above your ways and my thoughts above your thoughts. For just as from the heavens the rain and snow come down and do not return there till they have watered the earth, make it, it, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. My word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Joy. 
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, sole hope of the world, who by the preaching of your prophets unveiled the mysteries of this present age, graciously increase the longing of your people, for only at the prompting of your grace do the faithful progress any kind of virtue through Christ our Lord. A reading from the book of the prophet Baruch. Hear, O Israel, the commandments of life. Listen and know prudence. How is it, Israel, that you are in the land of your foes, grown old in a foreign land, defiled with the dead, accounted with those destined for the netherworld? You have forsaken the fountain of wisdom. Had you walked in the way of the Lord, you would have dwelt in enduring peace. Learn where prudence is, where strength, where understanding, that you may know also where are length of days and life, where light of the eyes and peace. Who has found the place of wisdom? Who has entered into her treasuries? The one who knows all things knows her. He has probed her by his knowledge. The one who established the earth for all time and filled it with four-footed beasts. He who dismisses the light and it departs, calls it, and it obeys him trembling, before whom the stars at their posts shine and rejoice. When he calls them, they answer, here we are, shining with joy for their maker. Such is our God, no other is to be compared to him. He has traced out the whole way of understanding and has given her to Jacob, his servant, to Israel, his beloved. Since then, she has appeared on earth and moved among people. She is the book of the precepts of God, the law that endures forever. All who cling to her will live, but those will die who forsake her. Turn, O Jacob, and receive her. Walk by her light toward splendor. Give not your glory to another, your privileges to an alien race. Blessed are we, O Israel, for what pleases God is known to us. The word of the Lord.
pray. O oh God, you constantly increase your church by your call to the nations. Graciously grant to those you wash clean in the waters of baptism the assurance of your unfailing protection through Christ our Lord. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, when the house of Israel lived in their land, they defiled it by their conduct and deeds. Therefore I poured out my fury upon them because of the blood that they poured out on the ground and because they defiled it with idols, I scattered them among the nations dispersing them over foreign lands. According to their conduct and deeds, I judged them. But when they came among the nations, wherever they came, they served to profane, profane my na holy name, because it was said of them, these are the people of the Lord, yet they had to leave their land. So I had relented because of my holy name, which the house of Israel profaned among the nations where they came. Therefore say to the house of Israel, thus says the Lord God, not for your sakes do I act house of Israel, but for the sake of my holy name, which you profaned among the nations to which you came. I will prove the holiness of my great name profaned among the nations in whose midst you have profaned it. Thus the nations shall know that I am the Lord, says the Lord God, when in their sight I prove my holiness through you. For I will take you away from among the nations, gather you from all, from all the foreign lands, and bring you back to your own land. I will sprinkle clean water upon you to cleanse you from all your impurities. And from all your idols, I will cleanse you. I will give you a new heart and place a new spirit within you, taking from your bodies your stony hearts and giving you natural hearts. I will put my spirit within you and make you live by my statutes, careful to observe my decrees. You shall live in the land I gave your fathers, you shall be my people, and I will be your God. The word of the Lord. Amen. Thanks be to God.
Let us pray. O God of unchanging power and eternal light, look with favor on the wondrous mystery of the whole church and serenely accomplish the work of human salvation which you planned from all eternity. May the whole world know and see that what was cast down in is raised up what had become old is made new, and all things are restored to integrity through Christ, just as by him they came into being, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. 
Oh God, you made this most sacred night radiant with the glory of the Lord's resurrection. Stir up in your church a spirit of adoption so that renewed in body and mind, we may render you undivided service through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who were baptized into Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness of life. For if we have grown into union with him through a death like his, we shall also be united with him in the resurrection. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that our sinful body might be done away with that we might no longer be in slavery to sin. For a dead person has been absolved from sin. If then we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. As to his death, he died to sin once and for all. As to his life, he lives for God. Consequently, you too must think of yourselves as being dead to sin and living for God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. At daybreak on the first day of the week, the women who had come from Galilee with Jesus took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found a stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were puzzling over this, behold, two men in dazzling garments appeared to them. They were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. They said to them, why do you seek the living one among the dead? He is not here, but he has been raised. Remember what he said to you while he was still in Galilee, that the son of man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified and rise on the third day and they remembered his words. Then they returned from the tomb and announced all these things to the eleven and to all the others. The women were Mary Magdalene, Joanna, and Mary, the mother of James. The others who accompanied them also told this to the apostles, but their story seemed like nonsense, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb, bent down and saw the burial cloths alone. Then he went home amazed at what had happened. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. how great God is to give us the gift of faith that we're able to gather here on this most holy night. How grateful we are that God has invited us to come into this garden of flowers, garden of life, garden of music, word of God. How grateful we are to God for inviting us to share in the banquet of life, to have given us the gift of baptism as you, we will move into the other portion of this liturgy. God has given us himself. You know, many times when I meet a couple, whether they were mar married you know, for a couple years or 50 years or whatever it is, I often ask them, how did you get to know each other? What happened to you? Who noticed whom? And, and they begin to talk, and it seems like the topic is pretty long because they give me the details because they remember. They remember what happened. They remember what occurred. And they remember it with sort of pleasant memories very often. But here today, when we gather for this Easter liturgy, Easter vigil, what we see here is God and we as human beings together, we have a story to share, a story of love. It began with the creation. As we know, God created this whole world for us that we may honor him, to we praise him. He invited us to share in his life Whatever the Lord did for us, he saw it was good, was pleasing, was something beautiful for us. We heard the whole story, as you know, here probably at the National Shrine. We, we hear all the readings, by the way. You know, there's seven plus eight and plus nine, so we have nine readings plus we have eight responsorial psalms, 
which means our, we are very much enriched by God's word. But why would God give us so many readings on this Easter vigil? Why? Because yesterday, as we know, we went through the sufferings and dying of the Son of God. And this evening, tonight, we're going from the passage of death into life. The passage from death of our Lord into his life, into resurrection. So why would the Lord give us so many readings? Because he wants us to take us on a journey, on a journey of love. What did he did for us? And how he called Abraham. And then how he called Moses. And the gifts that he has given to us freed us from the slavery. He also told us that not only he led us out of slavery, but then how he chose us through the prophet Isaiah, Baruch, and, and, and Ezekiel. We heard the story of his relationship with us, that he has not forgotten us, that he's with us, that he will always be there for us and always be there and granting us special graces, gifts of knowledge, understanding, so that we may follow him. That's why we have all these readings, because we kind of enter into this meditation, this contemplation of God's word, so that we may understand the love story of God, the love story that God has given to us. God is tied to us. Yes, we can have a scientific perspective on this world, and the scientific perspective cannot grasp the love with which we were formed, the love that this world is sustained by, and also the brokenness that we have experienced. As in the book of Barak and Ezekiel, we're reminded that we have gone astray, we have followed, we have not been faithful to God, and yet God has not forgotten us. The liturgy of the Easter Vigil is so rich as we begin, you might have already forgotten, we started outside. We started outside with the light, the light of Christ. We blessed the fire because of the fire by night, cloud by day, that is God's presence, his presence, the light of Christ. And we then lit the candle, the Paschal candle, we followed him. All of us followed him. We carried our own light because God, Christ has enlightened us to the truth, to know who we are, what is our destiny, where we are to go. So we followed him with our own light. And then Father Gabe sang beautifully, the exalted is known. Rejoice, O heavenly flowers, rejoice. Choirs of angels, rejoice. Why? Because we have a redeemer who's risen, who is here with us is the story of salvation. God has sent his only son so we may have life. And so we sang of the praises of the light who is Christ. The praises, that which gave us a completely different way of looking on this world through Christ, through the prism of Christ, we see the world in a different way. Yes, we still see the realities of each day, human realities, but but we see everything through the prism of Christ, through the prism of his salvation, through the prism of, of God's word, word which has been revealed to us. But then the other aspect of this liturgy is not only the light of Christ whom we follow, not only the word that we heard today, but also what follows now is the baptismal gift. We became a new creation. Not only God has created us, but he has recreated us into a new being. And as the, as the exalted say, a blessed sin, which has brought God such a redeemer. This is the only time the church praises sin. Isn't that interesting? We always say how bad the sin is. And today we sing how blessed is this fault of ours because it brought such a great redeemer. Because what happens to us is this, when we sin, yes, we offend God, yes, it is true, we reject him, yes, we reje reject his grace. But when we come back, because God has given us his son, when we come back, not only does he restore us to where we were, but he actually raises us to a higher level. This is the reward for our, return ba our returning back to God. God rewards us. 
He raised us to a higher level of being. That's the incredible gift of God's mercy. That's the gift of God's love for us, that he does not leave us where we were in our brokenness, in our sinfulness, in our rejections, in our misery, but he wants to raise us up and raise us to a higher level than we were before we even sinned. That is God's mercy, that is God's love, that is why we celebrate Easter, because death, yes, death came to the Son of God, and yet he also rose from the dead because he has the power of God in him and he shares this power with us. And that is why this portion of our liturgy which will follow is baptism because in, in baptism we died with Christ and with, in him we rise from the dead. So baptism being so important as the beginning of our transformation, forgiveness of sins, regeneration, we become part of the mystical body of Christ by baptism. We become incorporated into his body. We become the temple of the Holy Spirit. We become tabernacle of God. That's what we become by baptism. Baptism renews, regenerates, strengthens. And this is the, the portion of liturgy that will enter right now is baptism. Although we don't have candidates for baptism here, but all of us, we renew our baptismal promises that we reject Satan and all his ways and all his evil trappings, everything that we get stuck with and we can't see. So we reject Satan, we reject that work of his, the empty lies, but also we accept God, that we believe in God the Father, we believe in the Son of God, the Redeemer, we believe in the Holy Spirit, we believe in the gifts of the Holy Church, which God grants to us. That is why this special liturgy is so important, but this the liturgy of today will not end there. Then we'll go into the final one, which is, which is the Eucharist. The Eucharist will reenact the Last Supper, and then we will receive the Lord of glory who will come to us. What great grace is there for us today. What a great gift. We cannot even grasp what, 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 what is God who comes to us? What is our Lord, the true presence of Jesus, the body and blood, soul and divinity of Jesus, our Lord? This is what we receive today. This is the banquet of life. So for this liturgy, the Lord has invited us to come to this garden of love filled with beautiful flowers, fragrance, for the eyes to behold and going back into the history of what has God has given to us through his revelation as he revealed himself to us, as he made himself known to us, as he has given us the Holy Spirit so we may come to recognize and understand our life, the life of glory. But the liturgy will be over, but our life of glory will not. The liturgy will be over because we'll go back and sleep and rest, but our life with God will stay and will become fully fruitful when one day we shall share the banquet of glory with God in heaven, in paradise. An eye has not seen, an ear has not heard what God has prepared for those who love him. And we are the ones because we gather here. How great it is, how beautiful it is. Thank you for being here. I know this is the longest liturgy you'll be attending <laughs> because it's not that simple. The Lord wants to really overload us with graces. It's like a truckload of graces that we are supposed to receive and we are supposed to carry it in our hearts, renewed, refreshed, strengthened, uh, becoming more enlightened, becoming more aware of who we are and also our destiny. So today, we sing this wonderful song, Jesus Christ is risen today. Jesus Christ has overcome the death, the sting of death. Jesus Christ has overcome death and all the junk which sin has brought and has given us life. And just like the ladies today in the scripture, and as you know, and I have to say this, you see how wonderful God is? There's two dimensions of a church the hierarchical sort of man's version, and then there's ladies' version of the church. The Lord 
brought him to the cross. John was the exception. They were under the cross. And what happens is they see him first. They see him first. They're the ones. They go to the tomb because they cannot wait to see him. They want to anoint him. They want to be with him because they loved him. And so there they are. They're worried about the stone. Who's going to remove the stone from us? They're worried because they want us strong enough. The stone is removed. Everything is there. And then so that they would not be worried and fearful. The angel says, he's not here. He's risen. And he'll meet you. Go to my other, the male version of us. Go and tell them the road is risen. The Lord is risen. He's not there anymore. And so what Peter does, he heard, he heard Jesus several times. He says, on the, he says, the son of man will suffer and die, but on the third day he rose again, he rise again. But Peter doesn't remember those words. I'm not gonna blame my own kind. <laughs> but the fact is this, he forgot, and so he's worried what's going on. He's worried because what's going on. And what's going on is he runs. In the Gospel of Luke, we see him as running. But in the Gospel of John, John includes because he followed him together. And he walked, and what did he see? Not only an empty tomb, but the wrappings, the shroud of Turin, if you wish. The shroud is there on the side with the face coverings set aside. What does he say? And so what do, we, what do they have? There's no longer angel telling him. The angel told the women, he's risen. But Peter is supposed to remember. And John walks in and says, John walked in, saw the empty tomb and believed. But then we know that the Lord wanted Peter and the 11 to see him. And so you saw, they saw him that evening. That evening, he came through the locked door where they were gathered there in fear. And, and he said, peace be with you. Peace be with you. I am alive, I'm risen. This is what's waiting for us. That's why we can't be people who forget who we are. The Lord has risen and we shall rise. A life here on earth will not end. It will transition into a life of glory for those who believe. There's a resurrection into life, resurrection to glory. That's why we don't have to be afraid because we know what, what awaits us. The Lord is risen. The Lord has come. He died for us. He rose from us. And so today's liturgy underscores the whole summary of everything that the Lord has given to us in a quick way, reviewing the whole history of salvation from creation to salvation to glory. And this is what he gave, gives us. And so right now, after this, this, uh, this reflection, let, let us once again reaffirm our faith who we are. We say to the Lord, I do believe. I understand that you wish to give us everything, that you promise to give us glory, life of glory, to, be, to divinize us, and you will. We don't have to be afraid, even amidst all the troubles, all the difficulties. You know, we still have that power of faith which can, which can move mountains. May we then today, through this sacred liturgy, be refreshed, renewed, and delight in the gifts that God gives us, especially that we may delight in the gift of his Son and given to us in a sacramental way in the Eucharist. May we become regenerated, renewed, refreshed, that we may be great witnesses of Christ and his resurrection to all. May we be great witnesses of his love for humanity and may be filled with that consolation and joy of knowing what awaits us and what awaits us is life with God, life with all the loved ones, God, life in the banquet of heaven.
Dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly beseech the Lord our God to bless this water he has created, which will be sprinkled upon us as a memorial of our baptism. May he graciously renew us, that we may remain faithful to the Spirit whom we have received. Lord our God, in your mercy, be present to your people who keep vigil on this most sacred night, and for us who recall the wondrous work of our creation and the still greater work of our redemption, graciously bless this water. For you created water to make the fields fruitful and to refresh and cleanse our bodies. You also made water the instrument of your mercy, for through water you freed your people from slavery and quenched their thirst in a desert. Through water the prophets proclaimed the new covenant you were, you were to enter upon with the human race. And last of all, through water which Christ made holy in the Jordan, you have renewed our corrupted nature in both in the bath of regeneration. Therefore, may this water be for us a memorial of the baptism we have received and grant that we may share in the gladness of our brothers and sisters who at Easter have received their baptism through Christ our Lord. Dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once, by which we once renounce Satan and his works and promise to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, do you renounce Satan? I do. 
and all his works and all his empty promises. Do you believe in one God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting? And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and bestowed on us forgiveness of sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus, our Lord, for eternal life. Amen. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, filled with the Paschal joy, let us pray earnestly to God that he who graciously listened to the prayers and supplications of his beloved Son may now be pleased to look upon us in our lowliness. For the Holy Father, all bishops, priests, deacons, and religious, that they may faithfully teach, govern, and sanctify the Church during this difficult time, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our civil leaders, 
that Christ may give them wisdom and counsel to enact laws that lead their citizens in the ways of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For true peace and the reign of the kingship of Christ throughout the world, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the hope of the risen Christ may console and strengthen the sick and the suffering and bring them strength, hope, and healing, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are deprived of the sacraments at this time, that they may be given the grace to have a deeper relationship with Christ and others, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the intentions given to the Marians for the Easter Triduum, the Easter Octave, and the Easter Lily Cross, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all the members of the Association of Marian Helpers and the Confraternity of the Immaculate Conception, both living and deceased, and for all the intentions they have entrusted to us, may the Lord favorably hear their prayers and strengthen them in faith hope, and love, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the dying, that through the mercy of God, they may receive the gift of final perseverance, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the suffering souls in purgatory, that Christ will soon bring them to the eternal joy of heaven, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In a special way, we pray for an end to war in Ukraine, for all those who suffer there. We pray for the wounded. We pray for the dying. Lord, welcome them home. We pray also for conversion of those who set themselves out against others, for conversion of Putin, for all, conversion of anyone who sets himself or herself against others in any possible way. Lord, grant them this conversion of heart. We also pray for all those who are addicted in any way. We pray for our brothers and sisters in our own families who are no longer practicing our faith. Lord, grant them this grace of conversion of faith, of love, love of you. For all these intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O oh God, you know that our life in this present age is subject to suffering and need. Hear the desires of those who cry out to you and receive the prayers of those who believe in you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in man. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in princes. and my sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name. Except we, we ask, O Lord, the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings that what has begun in the Paschal Mysteries may by the working of your power Bring us to the healing of for to the healing of eternity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. 
It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this night, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, for he is the true Lamb, who who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people, exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, and these holy unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and William, our bishop, and all those who holding to the truth and on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred night of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Persogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos, and Damien, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. O 
Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you, also for those whom you have, whom, whom you have been pleased to give, the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. And the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins to this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Martem tua, anunciamos domine, et tua resurrection and confite. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace.
To us also, your servants who those sinners hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints, admit us, we beseech you into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Amen. Through whom you continue to make all these good gifts, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer to one another a sign of Christ's peace. Peace of Christ be with you.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed.
Now I'm going to lead our live stream viewers in the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Reading from the Diary of St. Faustina, April 2nd, 1937. In the morning, Oh, I'm sorry, wrong one. 1067, March 28th, Resurrection. During the Mass of Resurrection, I saw the Lord in beauty and splendor, and he said to me, my daughter, peace be with you. He blessed me and disappeared, and my soul was filled with gladness and joy beyond words. My heart was fortified for struggle and sufferings. Let us pray. <clears throat> For on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this Paschal sacrament one in mind and heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
As you know, tomorrow is Easter Sunday. So we have 9 o'clock Mass, which we live streamed, 10.30 Mass, and 2 o'clock. Uh, and as you know, that uh, we hear confessions every day, so even tomorrow in the afternoon, we'll do so likewise. First of all, I want to thank you for being here. Thank you for supporting us. Thank you for, for your life, faith, and you're here because you believe and you love the Lord. I also want to thank all of you who are watching us live stream, wherever you are. I wish to thank you for your, for your wonderful witness. You continue to communicate with us. I know we're very happy to have Father Chris Allard with us. You know, uh, he, his mom is doing a little bit better, and he's here with us. And I want to thank all the Marians who are here, in particular for Father, uh, Father uh, Inskip, who is doing the Master Ceremonies for us. And above all, I wish you, each one of you, a truly blessed Easter. I, in the Eastern traditions, they would say, Christ is risen. Christ is truly risen. And we will sing the beautiful and the end of him. But before that, know that you are with us and you are in our prayer. And that, that we wish you the best. That Christ may be alive in you. May he bless you with everything that he has prepared for you. One day that you may share his glory. The Lord be with you. Bow your heads, friend, pray for God's blessing. Pour out, may Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. May he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten Son and thou you with the price of immortality. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help, exalting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. May the blessing of the Almighty God the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain your hearts forever. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.
There is nothing more important we can ever do in our life than receive the promises Jesus offers us in divine mercy. Right now, we're running a special on our book, Understanding Divine Mercy, that explains it all. Just enter the code FAITH, and we can get this book to you for only $9.95. God bless you. The information's on your screen. Please pick up a copy. Jesus said that he wanted this image in every home, and our goal is to make that happen. So we've made these extremely affordable. They're the cheapest ones price-wise that you'll find on the internet, but the nicest in quality. And these images and many more can be found on our website, divinemercyart.org. If you want to go straight, you can also get it at shopmercy.org. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.